let's take a moment to appreciate this moment. Would you join me to close your eyes and just appreciate why we're here? Thank you. Thank you. I feel very lucky to be here. Do you feel lucky to be here? I'm here for all women around the world, from Africa to Afghanistan, where I was two months ago. I want to thank TEDx um, Amsterdam Women for inviting me. In 2009, I was speaking at TEDx Amsterdam, and um, Marianne, uh, she's one of my heroes. She's doing amazing work for not just black women, but all women around the world. Thank you, Marianne, for inviting me. Today, I want to talk to you about I am the code and why I think I am the code and share my journey. Remember 1970s? <laughs> that decade was an amazing decade, really amazing decade. It was an amazing decade because I was born in, 19, in 1974. So when I was in my village in Senegal growing up in that decade, Apple was founded, Microsoft was founded. We all remember the floppy disk that was introduced. <laughs> we don't think about them anymore. 1970s, they were very, very powerful. As Marianne said, I'm from Senegal, West Africa. My mother is a very wealthy woman, but she gave us away with my twin brother at the age of five years old. But I want you to pay attention a little bit. Just pay attention because I was made in Africa. I was made in Senegal. I was made in my little village. That's where I grew up. Just pay attention a little bit. Pay attention right now to yourself. Pay attention to everything you think about. Pay attention to what you see. And pay attention in the, next, in the future. I'm going to take you to your journey. As I said, this is Senegal, West Africa. Have you been to Senegal? Who's been to Senegal? Right. So, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so Senegal, um, I was born in 1974, as I said earlier. So that's me and my twin brother. That's the only slide, that's the only picture I have got with my twin brother. The only picture we have. So I grew up in a very, very difficult conditions. I, do, I grew up in 28 foster houses. I grew up in an orphanage, in a village SOS. You all know that. We have, they have a headquarter here in, in, in the Netherlands. And my twin brother lives in Germany today. He's an asylum seeker in Germany. He, nearly get, he will get his passport very soon. And we are twins. I'm Senegalese British. He is not German yet. <laughs> Remember this picture. I want to show you this picture because every time you go to Africa, this is the sort, you see a lot of young girls like this. This was me in the 1970s. It was this sort of girl you used to see on the street, sometime as a Peace Corps volunteer, or sometime you go to Africa because you want to do good, or you go on holiday. You see so many young women out there who are innocent, desperate, looking for attention, looking for love, looking for someone to give them a little bit of time. That was me in the 1970s, wandering around the street of Kaulak with no future. That was me. Think about it today. There are 65 million children who don't go to school. I was that statistic in the 1970s. I had my birth certificate when I was 20 years old. Today, there are 29 million illiterate girls lives in Africa. 17 million are missing school. I was a traffic child. At the age of 14, I was traffic from Paris to, to, from Senegal to Paris. I was a young prostitute. I was picked up at the age of 16 by the police. I didn't go to school. I didn't have any education. I didn't have any formative education. I slept in a tube station in Paris for over a year and a half before I get picked up by the police. I started reading and writing when I was 16. I knew that I need to read and write. I loved numbers. Numbers helped me read. 
Many years later, I saw this quote from Kofi Annan saying, literacy is a bridge between misery and hope. He's very right. I had no chance then. So I couldn't read, I couldn't write. At the age of 19, I went to the UK. I did a lot of cleaning jobs. I work in bars, in restaurants. I work in councils. I did everything I could to make it. But I wanted to read and write. I wanted to understand the world. I wanted to know who I was. I wanted to know why my mom was so wealthy in Senegal and why did I have to suffer like this in Europe? Was it accidental? Why was I there? I was asking a lot of questions. And throughout asking questions, I've been asking questions all the time, all the time. Throughout the years, I've been blogging, writing, I've been very vocal. When I hear the speaker earlier, that people need to speak up, it's not just African that should speak up, but it's everybody should speak up. Sometimes when you see injustice, you need to speak up. When you see something is not right, you need to speak up. So I dedicated my life for women and girls for the last 10 years, I've been working on that. Because I did not want to see any young girl growing up like me. So I lobbied. I sit in 17 African governments to look into their policies. I'm vocal, I'm activist, I disturb. Because I don't want to see any young girl suffer like me. Then I launched a new movement called I Am The Code. And I want to teach one million girls by 2030 how to code as part of the UN 2030, 2030 agenda. I learned how to code seven languages in two years. I code from C++ to Python. I learned that by myself. Two weeks ago, the movement I Am The Code was endorsed by the UN High Level Panel in New York. It took 10 years for my work to be recognized, <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> And I remember sitting in a room with Christine Lagarde, who's been my mentor for many years. People like Christine Lagarde believing in me means a lot. She sat and she said, we need to, we need to make sure this young woman is listened to. That's how I got I Am The Court Andrust. And I always believed that technology is an enabler. Because when I was growing up in Kaolak, I used to play with cars, I used to play with little things. I used to good, be, be good with my hands. Because I didn't have any education, I was in the hand of NGOs, from house to house, place to place, unstable. Didn't have anything to do. But I knew that at one stage, technology was going to help me out. And I believe, when I, when I started to understand the world, I knew technology was an enabler. And what I want to do with I Am The Code globally is to make sure we empower the future digital leaders. Africa today needs designers. Africa needs people to work in manufacturing industries. Africa needs people, skilled people. And women and girls are part of that. And I'm so happy that TEDx Amsterdam Women is, is on, and I can come and share this with you, because women and girls are the future. I'm not saying boys are not, <laughs> but I believe that women and girls can change the world. And today we have around 314 hubs I work across the continent, where we have in 93 cities in 42 countries. I've been working in setting up tech hubs across Africa, helping women entrepreneurs, young women entrepreneurs, so many talent in the continent, people don't know. So I get in there to try to support them and just give them a little bit of hope. Recently, we launched a new computer kit where young girls can code in literally five minutes. And you can always check the computer kit later if you want to. So it's a Raspberry Pi inside, seven applications. Girls all around the world can code now in five minutes. My little young friend, Leticia. Leticia is from Uganda. I think that in 2030, Leticia should go to the United Nations. She should go with skills. She should go with, she should go with a job. She need to, we need to know that Leticia has got a power to change her life. And this is my job. My job is to make sure in the next 14 years, Leticia has got all the tools she needs to make a difference in her life. I don't want Leticia to be like Mariam Jean. I don't want that. So I travel all around the world 
to help young women. They, get, they are involved into the Sustainable Development Goals, if you know, they are part of it. Goal number five, number four, number eight, and number nine, the girls are there, they're part of the conversation, they check the targets, they check all the indicators, because I want them to have a voice. We can't build the systems and platforms without young women anymore, or without girls. I want everybody to have a voice, especially young women. I didn't have a voice on platform and system when I was growing up in Senegal. Girl, girls around the world, they can code. This is Kaulak in, in my village. I went back. Girls are learning how to code literally in five minutes. The opportunity I did not have when I was growing up in Senegal. They have this opportunity now. We are the only organization in, Senegal, in Africa today teaching young women how to code. It's not a hype, or it's not just young girls in Africa need to code. No, I'm giving them skills they need in the next 14 and 20 years. I want to tell you why I am the code. I mentioned earlier that you need to pay attention. I think I am the code. I really think so. Do you think I am the code? <laughs> <laughs> I think I am the code because I've been through so much in my life. It's unbelievable. And sometimes I sit down and I say, did you really do all that? And uh, the reason why I think I am the code is it's, it's so important that tenacity. Um, a journalist asked me one day, how did you manage to get through all this? I got through it because I knew that there was something waiting. I always believe things will get better. Always. All the time. In the cold weather in the UK. In the, in the tube station in Paris, I always knew things will get better. So this is where I go back and give to our girls. I believe I am the code because we need action right now. We need real action. We need action. We need empathy. The world lacks empathy. We don't care about people anymore. We're busy with ourselves. The reason why I go, I'm going back to Africa, I'm going back to Senegal, I could st sit in the UK, enjoy my life, but I can't do that. I need to go back and build my continent. I need to go back and help young girls all around the world. We need a clear plan for women and girls. We need that. The women and girls programs are not just programs to feel sorry for women and girls. There are programs that we need to use to help young women and girls. I hope you can join me to do that. We need a new empowerment code. So many programs in Africa don't work. Like I said earlier, I was in the hand of NGOs. I was in the hand of NGOs wearing all the clothes. I was in the hand of NGOs being promised things that never happen. I was in the hand of NGOs where I see someone today, tomorrow I don't see them. And I, I try so hard to make sure that young girls growing across the world have got future. When I was in Afghanistan, I met this young woman. I said, what do you want to do? She said, I just want to get an education. But the word education is not just because we fancy all these big words. It's because we need to do something about it. We need to do programs. We need to invest into programs that help young women and girls across the world. Not just in Africa, but also in Europe. I live in the southeast of England. I'm very lucky to live in the south of England, where young women are desperate to learn STEM subjects. They're desperate to get a job. They're desperate to be mentored. Young women don't have any funding. They need help. So we need empathy. We need to pay attention. One more attention we need to pay. When we pay attention, we can then start claiming the new empowerment code. This, these events like this, the TEDx Amsterdam women, all TEDx women around the world is bringing all women, all colors, to start really looking at what is our goal in the next 20 years, in the next 14 years. How can Laetitia be empowered to stand up at the United Nations where she can learn how to code, she can get a digital job, she can become an entrepreneur if she wants. How can a young woman in, in the UK or in Netherlands have a power to do what she wants if we don't have any empathy? When we're building platform and systems, we don't think about empathy. We don't think about women and girls. We don't think about, we don't think about anything else. So think about the new empowerment code. Now, as you go home this evening, think about the way you can help more women and girls. I want to thank you for having me. Thank you.